Welcome to Sculpture Studios. A little bit of polystyrene carving and some glass fibre work here today for a private home installation. We've been contacted by Greg Shire from B2B Exhibitions and a brief of creating a fantasy-like tree with a face carving. The idea is so that a child can open the door into the tree's mouth and we're following a rough concept image and bringing this into 3D. We've been told the sizes this tree needs to be and then it's up to us to get cracking carve the form and eventually finish in glass fibre. With projects like this, it's always nice to have a little artistic interpretation left up to us, but of course we'll confirm the final carving with the client first before any glass fibre work goes ahead. For now though, Aidan's roughly sketching the facial features onto the raw tree trunk to begin the carving process. Aidan's going to be using handheld hot wires, nail and wire brushes, and working down to stonemason rifflers and sandpapers. Pretty straightforward, so for now, I'll leave you to enjoy the boss get started, because there's something quite satisfying about a bit of free hand work and a bit of free hand carving. See what you think. With the top section being carved, joined to the rest of the trunk and carved into the rest of the form, it's now time to stand this up and send off some photographs to the client for approval. With all going well, this can then be sanded down to a smoother finish to begin the next stage of production. This sculpture will eventually need to split down into two sections so that when this is being installed on site, it can fit through smaller doors and passageways. Aidan's going to create this split line here during the polystyrene stage, and this way the joint can sort of be concealed into the shape and lines of the carving and blend in, almost like magic. Did I mention I make magic wands now? I mean, some things in our profession just simply can't be taught, and that right there is one of them. Now that we have the sculpture broken down into two sections, we need to create a protective barrier between the foam and the resin that's going on top. Of course, I'm talking about our secretly sourced sticky back tin foil, and we need to make sure that every square inch is covered so the resin doesn't burn through and cause any breaches. So moving forward into 2021, we feel like it's not professionally acceptable um, to have any dancing in the videos again. So from here on out we're doing everything possible to make sure these measures are put in place. Oh, for God's sake. Kev, get him out. Get him out of it. No, not the hook! Just get him off the screen. Clear him off the screen. Drop the thing on him. Drop it. Drop it! Uh, Liam, chuck your skin in. Chuck it in! We're not going to be having any more dancing in any more of our future projects unless requested otherwise. We're removing the majority of the polystyrene from the reverse side of the sculpture so there's space inside behind the door. 
the top branches, where nobody's going to be seeing or getting into anyway, we're leaving the polystyrene inside for a bit of extra strength. For the join line, we've created a flange that can be bolted through to pinch the inside of the fiberglass together. We're adding a gel coat layer of resin on both the inside and the outside of the fiberglass to lose that fibrous matte texture. This makes the surface generally smoother, both visually as well as to the touch, as we want to be sure that this is safer for children to be around. When this is installed, plush layers or furnishings can be added inside if needs be. Now that the construction side is complete, excusing the fact that this is currently being held up by a plank, yes we do realise that, this is going to be bolted to the wall on site via the exterior flanges, so don't panic. Aiden is now starting on the artwork. He begins by building up with a theatrical layer of paints to accentuate the deep spots and highlight the top areas. When Aiden's happy with the overall look, he'll once again confirm the artwork with the client via photographs before everything is locked down with a final lacquer. For the eventual finish, there's a few different routes we could go down. Haha, <laughs> a few different routes. We could go with a full gloss lacquer, which will be easy to wipe down and clean but might appear too plastic and shiny, or a matte finish which would give a more natural, organic feel but might be a little bit difficult to clean later down the line. So instead we're going to go smack bang in the middle with a semi-sheen finish for the best of both worlds. For the collection of the sculpture, Greg has come down to the studio himself to pick this up. This is the first time he's been to the workshop for the project, and the first time he's seen this in person. Naturally, precautions need to be taken, what with the current climate the sculpture is being created in, but it's useful for Aiden to be able to go through the installation process with Greg himself before this is taken to site. This isn't the first time we've created something for a personal home installation, and certainly won't be the last, and we know for a fact that Greg has plenty more theming from the same client to be getting on with, so hopefully we'll be working with him again later down the line. Thank you very much to Greg Shire from B2B Exhibitions for approaching us for the project, and of course, thank you to everyone currently watching at home, commuting on the train, on a lunch break, on the toilet, or wherever you enjoy taking the time to watch our videos. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.